to thank Bristol Valley Theater for providing us this great spot, and it's warm now. For many years, it was not warm during the winter, so we have a great venue here in Naples to do winter activities. Um, I'd like to thank Troy Cusa, who's hiding over there behind the camera. He is taking this for us so that we can have not only the slide presentation, but Bill and his dialogue. Um, and I'd like to thank the Naples Historical Society for sponsoring this and other local events. Um, if you're interested in joining the Naples Historical Society, there's a table out in the lobby. It's $10 whether you're one person, two people, ten people. It's only $10. <laughs> so feel free. There are applications and membership cards out there. And last but definitely not least, I want to thank Bill um, for his decades of dedication and diligence in collecting and preserving Naples history and for sharing his knowledge with us tonight. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. I think we're ready to go. Uh, get the projector going. I'll use the microphone if I need it. Can everyone hear me now? Or should I use the microphone? Okay. Uh, I've been town historian for 38 years and my hobby has been taking uh, slides of a lot of different things. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Pretty good? Okay. So tonight we have an age of barns. Barns have always been interesting to me. So I have, uh, you'll see 140 slides here. And we'll start, got to have the lights off. Wait a minute, get this thing going. Got too many things. Okay. Uh, can we leave the house lights on? Is it okay? What do you think? Yeah. Okay. These are three barn books that uh, I have home collected and use it for the uh, title of the program. This is kind of a skeleton of a barn and you can study it and this was down near Rushville and it shows the where they put the roof here and uh, there's a hay mow in the basement. There was a place for maybe a horse and a couple cows. And, but that's kind of a skeleton of a barn. Uh, these are tools that they used in barn constructions. Nowadays they, they use these pole barns so they don't use the old fashioned method. Uh, this is called the commander. This drove the T nails in. There are mallets here. This was used to round or square off the uh, beams they used in the barn. This drilled the holes for the T nails. The T nails would hold these. These were models of the corners, and they mortise those out and then drive these uh, wooden pegs in there to hold them in place. This is an old picture of the way they would raise the barn. Now the mill here in Naples, which I own behind the hotel, was built this way. It would take a lot of people, they'd have these poles, they'd build that section on the ground and then turn it up and then connect the, uh, the next one to it. Took a lot of help and uh, they'd have bees to build uh, kind of a weekend project to build a barn. This is a barn I took over in Italy Valley probably 10 or 15 years ago. They were tearing it down and they were using the barn siding. I think they were selling it. And then they'd end up with, and it shows about the same type of barn that was in the previous picture. C kind of an interesting, uh, even the window up here in the top was, and probably the stable was down in here someplace. This is the uh, museum, I uh, can't think of the name. Uh, Mumford, Mumford, yeah. And that uh, shows you the old fashioned barn construction logs and uh, put together. It looks like a little stable in there. 
Now, this is a scene up uh, off uh, the road to Ingleside. That was a Mark Lawyer farm at one time. All these buildings, I, I think most of those are gone now. This picture is probably 25, 30 years old. Uh, I think Dave Voss had this at one time. This shows uh, a barn in different uh, time, different seasons of the year. This was probably early spring. This was summer. <laughs> I don't think they were using it. <laughs> and later on in the fall. So that's, uh, and you notice here the different uh, roofing they had here. They had shingles, they had uh, metal uh, sheets there, and uh, that's a typical barn construction. The next slides are kind of, I call them uh, beautiful barns because uh, the people that owned them kept them up, they painted them. This is over on Cuca Lake, you can see the bluff point here. But the people that owned this, to this day, keep it up pretty well. This is up in uh, Eelpot, and uh, I think that's been changed, the paint, since I uh, took this picture, but the barns are in beautiful shape. This is uh, near Menden on the way to Rochester, and a, a doctor owned this uh, barn here, and of course the house with it, and it has a few uh, different things here. There's a windmill here to, to uh, get the water. These are cupolos to get ventilation. And you have windows over the doors here. They didn't have electricity in the old days, so they had to have windows for to get light in different places in the barn. This is down near Elmira, and there again, all the barns are kind of a pink color. So you have colors, you have uh, natural siding. This is one, uh, a gray barn, I believe that is not here any longer. It's uh, Bristol Valley at the end there, going towards five and 20. Beautiful fence. I took this probably 25 years ago or so. A lot of these slides I took, some of them are like 35, 40 years old. You know where this one is? This is at Widmer's. Now uh, Hazlitt, Hazlitt Winery. John uh, Motts kept the flowers going here. Did a great job. And one of the Mott's boys still lives here. Now, this is a barn made into a store, or probably was built as a store. This was up in Brighton near Rochester. The Red Barn. Down on the Lake Road, we have, uh, well, it's advertising Clark's Boat Livery but they were selling grapes when I took this picture. Monica's Pies is just down the road here on the right. So that's a use for a barn. Now, where Monica is, if you stop there sometimes, that barn has two basements. It's built on a steep bank and uh, both basements are used. Stop sometime and go around the side and take a look at it. It's quite interesting. This was up on uh, Lake Ontario, and they had a orchard here, I believe, and they had a little barn, kind of a garage where they sold fruit, and they had a little silo there, kind of unique. This building is up in South Bristol, and it's near Bram's uh, winery, one of the gals here tonight, but it doesn't look like that today. It looks more like this. <laughs> Let me back that up. That's quite a change. Trees were cut down. The barn was shortened. They even had a nice mailbox here. It looked like a little horse. 
and forget the uh, there was a business in there at one time anybody remember what it was maybe I'll think of it in a minute Bill that's your barn Bill Cooper's barn way back before you got it oh there was a store in there yeah there was a store Bill bought the uh, barn made it into a house even did you put the silo on it he added the silo. He added the silo. This is on the other end of town, Gid Hankey's barn. And uh, he was selling stoves at that time when this was taken. Most barns had a little, I think this was a milk house. They would uh, uh, have the cans ready when the milk delivery man picked them up. And he was selling uh, stoves, I believe. This is down near uh, Bristol Harbor, and it was a barn made into apartments, which is kind of unique. Looks pretty good, and uh, I think it's still there today. This is the Naples Mill, and that was uh, a mill at one time. Today it has, I think, either four or five apartments in it. So it has a new use. And different uh, silos and outbuildings uh, have different uh, pictures and signs on them. This is a cow. This is down near Bath, I believe. This is uh, one I took. This is kind of unique because it has uh, a painting here and it has a cow here and it has the name of the owners of the farm and the, evidently it was built in 1950 the barn this was uh, on 5 and 20 near uh, uh, Waterloo I believe they were advertising Alice Chalmers a lot of barns in those days had signs on them Of course, some were more famous than others. This is uh, advertising a, a liniment pierces, I believe. But a lot of them advertised, well, this one has a date on it when it was built, 1875, I believe. That was outside of Gorham. And I got this sign. This was down uh, near Canandaigua, just east of Canandaigua and they were painting over it and I got this in fact I used headlights on the car to get the picture and those were on a lot of barns both both seal fast uh, tire repairs this is over near Honeyoy Lambeau's uh, mobile home park they had other signs on the barn here but they painted over them I think they were selling snowmobiles at the time And this building is still, as you go up 21 uh, coming into North Cohocton, Ed Hart's gun shop, that building is still there, but I believe the sign is painted over. When you go by it, take a look. It's just before you get to, uh, into uh, North Cohocton. And a lot of barns had these uh, different signs painted on. Castor oil on the left, Lucky Strike cigarettes. Remember, there's, uh, they changed the color of the pack from green to white when the war came along to save, uh, I guess, the, the printing or the paint or something. Lucky Strike green has gone to war. Do you remember that one? Do you, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> Did you smoke? No, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, what is this? Livery stable. You know where it is? Yeah. Right behind the hotel, kind of. But it was uh, Francisco's livery stable. Uh, who owns it now? Gary Pridmore, right? And evidently he was burning wood at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> 
I think I took this in New Hampshire or Vermont, but uh, a lot of barns had doors painted, different uh, signatures on them and things like that. But the big one, there's a book of nothing but mail pouch pictures. This fellow would uh, go all over the country and paint uh, mail pouch uh, signs like this. And it would take him not too long, probably a day, maybe a day and a half to paint because he knew just how to do it. And uh, you still see quite a few around of the old mail pouch. But most of them are like this, they've been painted over. Under this Rice Restaurant sign, it says Chew Red Man. Remember Red Man? Anybody here ever chew it? <laughs> I don't think people chew like they used to. Remember Dyke Porter? Oh, yeah. When Dyke would chew, and my grandmother had a little walk to the well, it had a cement to, or a stone in the path. It was probably 12 inches across. He could spit and cover that whole stone <laughs> with his tobacco. <laughs> I wish I'd have got a picture of that. But. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what kind he chewed, but it was pretty good. <laughs> and this was during the bicentennial. That was in a, a building down in Bath, the American flag. And in Naples, we have the Seeger Stadium up in uh, Italy Valley. Any Seegers here tonight? No. Uh, I don't know where they got those uh, letters. I think there was a, on uh, Route 20 out of uh, Bloomfield, there was a barn that had uh, a beer sign on it, and I think that's where they got these. And they probably filled in some they didn't have to make it Seeger Stadium. Not many people have their own stadium like that in their backyard. Up in, uh, towards Honeyoy, Gulick Road, uh, how many have gone by this uh, barn? It's still there. I think they, every once in a while they repaint it. It's amazing. They have four different scenes on it. Now, Hotel Seneca, that's in, uh, was in Geneva, I believe. This sign was outside of Canandaigua. You know what happened to it? What do you think? Restored. <laughs> I think it's gone now. <laughs> this was over going into uh, Prattsburg. And uh, this was uh, one thing about this barn, you could make it any length you wanted, and it was had free. Uh, rain inside there in the hay mound. There weren't any uh, posts in the way or anything. But I think the, the man that owned it was, if he needed more space, he kept building onto it. So that's kind of unusual. Now, instead of building a traditional barn, they build pole barns like this. This is up uh, just out of uh, North Cohocton on a side road. That's when they were building it, and they were fairly easy to build because uh, you had the posts along the side. You had, I think you could buy these frames already made, just put them up there and nail them together. And when you're all through, look like this. Yeah. You got a sliding door, you got protection, metal roof, and it looks pretty good. This is an unusual barn. You can see this, or you used to see it, going on 5 and 20 towards uh, Buffalo. And it was, uh, there was a name of the people that built this barn because it was, I went on a barn tour with a man from, uh, taught over to Geneseo, and we stopped at the barn. You, next picture, you'll see how it's made. See, it's a 
It's made with tuba fours. Instead of big beams, they would uh, laminate these tuba fours, and it was freestanding in here with a hay mow and everything. You could have a uh, where they picked up the hay and dropped it. They didn't have any cross uh, beams there, anything in the way. It was kind of a there's a name for it, but I just can't remember it. Anybody know from being a farmer? Clear span. Clear span. Clear well, span. There was a or trade a, a Wells Curtis or something. A name of the uh, the farmer or the uh, construction man that first started it. You know where this one is? Hickory Bottom. I think that's one of the longest barns uh, around here. I'm not sure how many feet, I would guess to 300 feet maybe or more, 400. And I think they build onto it. They're doing it right here. But I don't think they're in business anymore with the cows, right? Chickens. Chickens, yeah. Chicken farm. I took this, I think, in, uh, in New England. That's a, a stone barn, and the cupola there is the size of a small house. Tremendous building, but it had a fire in it, and then ended up like this. Not good. In the old days, when they had lanterns, and uh, maybe you'd be milking in the wintertime and that, sometimes the lantern would get tipped over and you'd have a barn fire. And sometimes uh, over on, uh, was it Elf Ellerington or someone that uh, they claim somebody used to burn barns, but I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know why they would. This is another view of that. That, that was a tremendous barn. Took a lot of time to build, but probably didn't take very long to burn. This is up in, uh, tell you who owns this is, uh, he's from, was from Wayland, or is from Wayland. Who was it? John? Uh, oh, Lindino. yeah. Boy, he's done a job on that baby. That has, uh, this is the old, uh, it's got a cupola on the silo, probably the only one in the world. And it's got, it had a copper roof on it. Now I think the barn is gone, but I think the silo is still there. Anybody know? Barn's still there, the silo's gone. Silo's gone, the barn's there. The yeah, the Rau Ranch. This is down near Bath, and you've got two kinds of silos. Uh, you've got the cement stave and the wood stave, I believe. Silos were kind of unique. Uh, this is one that was made of uh, stone. Evidently, the barn went down, but the silo is still there. This was up, I think, in Vermont. I took this, and it's kind of unique because you got a double silo here, you got ventilators here, you got the old uh, what do you call these uh, for ventilation? You got the doors with the painted diamonds on them. Doesn't look like the farm is used anymore, though. <coughs> this is over near Springwater Indian Valley campsite. They're using it for a sign. Now this is, uh, I gotta think for a minute, but it was a silo made into a house. Kind of unique. Be a little tricky to go up a stairway in there though. Circular. What say, Bill? Circular. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they had a fire escape in it like the uh, firemen. Pole. This is down near Gorham, and there again, it's a unique farm. It has a, uh, what do you call this, a cobblestone house, and it has the uh, 
barn with the date it was built in 1887 and it's very well kept which is amazing uh, this was up on 21 towards uh, Oh, what do I want to say, Canandaigua, but they were redoing the basement. Came out like this. Still there, I believe. Don't know who owns it. This was down in Middlesex, and in the old days, they would take time, instead of just putting clapboard, they'd put a design in them, and, but they put a, uh, ventilator in here which kind of spoils it but they should have painted it red maybe <laughs> this was uh, got to tell you about this one we went on a barn tour down in Pennsylvania this was over near uh, Hammondsport or Branchport and they didn't have any windows in the barn except up here this was facing I think east so the sun would come in the morning, but I got out to take a picture and I stepped in some manure. <laughs> it happens. In the next couple of hours, I wasn't too popular. <laughs> so you want to be careful. <laughs> you know where this uh, barn is? I think it might still be there. Alfred, it's got a clack in the peak there. Very unusual. This is on uh, Cuca Lake. It's got a widow's walk in the barn right here, but it is no longer there. This picture is quite old, but it's unusual. This is on 21 near Canandaigua, and uh, they came out, what do you call these little, where they have the calves? Hutches. Bunkers? Hutches. Hutches. Careful. How long have they been in use? 30 years. 30. Uh, why do they use it that way? It's easier? Well, Separates them? Separates them and keeps them healthy. They don't get okay. this, everybody gets sick with one of They get the same feed and everything. Yeah. Hmm. You learn something every day. This is... Uh, you know where that is near, uh, yeah, what's the town? Cheshire. Cheshire, couldn't think of it. Kind of unique, you've got a barn here, I think they're living in it maybe. Garage, little pond here, spring of the year. This uh, is a barn that's uh, had a lot of pictures taken of it. And it's up on uh, County Road 12, Bear Hills and the here, lakes down here. The only problem with the barn, it slants out. There's a little slant, I think, on the ends and sides, which means it, uh, it gets weather instead of a straight up and down uh, siding on it. But that picture's been, uh, their barn's been taking a lot of pictures of. There again, this one uh, I think was over near, I can't remember for sure, but it, it's kind of unique because this kind of a garage matched the house. And here's a cupola, beautiful uh, barn and everything. And they even had a team of, uh, what kind of horses would these be? Clydesdales? They're just a big old Belgians. Belgians? No. Who's got all the Belgians? Somebody down at Italy Valley way down. Sure. Can't think of it. But boy, the, the buildings are really kept up. Beautiful shape. And they evidently were still using the horses when this picture's probably 10 years old. This is up towards Rochester, going from Victor in the city. And it was an indoor track for, I don't know whether they, I think they were maybe horses, they'd use that in the wintertime for exercise. Is that what 
you think they would use those for? Indoor track like that? I don't know what else they would uh, use it for, but it was a complete circle. Is that a cow or horse there in the field? It's a horse. Horse. You know where this one is? Up on County Road 12. Who, who owns that now? Anybody know? It's just about a mile out of Naples going towards Honeyway. A nice barn picture. Could be on a calendar. Now this is kind of unique. This is over in Italy Valley up the road there. I can't remember the road, but uh, this is where they would store their equipment under that barn. And I think later on someone made that so you could live upstairs there. I'm not sure. This is over near Cohacton and there again, a beautiful barn. Imagine painting all those doors, trim. Uh, Marion Schuyler owned this barn at one time, who owned the hotel. Uh, it's up on, uh, what is it? Strong Hill, Bill. Strong Hill. It goes up in the garage, Swing uh, Bob Swingle's garage. You go up that hill, that's where this barn was. And it was kind of going downhill. There's another barn on the left that was pretty well gone. This is the way they looked. But some people bought it and it, they fixed it all up, but they live up out of sight here. The road goes up here around. And I can't think of their name. Yeah. What is it? Reaper. Reaper. Leafer? Leaper. Yeah. Leaper. Leaper. Yeah. They got their initials on the barn, I think, now. Yeah. Did a beautiful job. That's another shot of that same barn from uh, behind it down the field there. Notice everything's going to pot here. Trouble with barns, unless you uh, use them and need them, costs a lot to put roofs on them and side them and paint them and take care of them. And a good windstorm on the farm where my grandmother lived, the wind picked the barn up and moved it about two or three feet off the foundation. So. That can happen. This is up near Buffalo. I think that, what do they call it, a shaker barn maybe? And it's got an overhang. Doesn't look like they were using it probably a long time ago. But it's a beautiful barn. This is up in uh, Vermont. And it's a museum, but it's kind of unique because it's a horseshoe uh, design. And inside they had all kinds of tools and things. This is overlooking Cuca Lake. And that barn was, this picture was probably taken 20 years ago. And it was built with field stone and it doesn't look like they used very much mortar on it because uh, you can't see it, and later on it kind of disintegrated, but it was, I think it was a berry, uh, maybe they picked berries and put them in there or something. Anybody have an idea? But look at the construction of that thing. <laughs> it was still standing. <laughs> Unique. Well, we all know where this one is. Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones. Anything unusual about it? No windows. Why no windows? Didn't need them. Didn't have any cows in it or anything, maybe. What do you think? 
killing me. The only light you'd get when you opened the doors, it would come in there. I don't think it's still there, though, is it? No. No, it went down. I don't think he was using it, maybe. Okay, this is down, <coughs> can't think of the town, down the middle of the state. But it's a uh, Actagon barn, Actagon cupolo. Let's see if there's a house with it. No, but there's a round barn here. This was uh, just over the border in Massachusetts and five and 20, I think. And boy, that was, is a beautiful barn. Isn't that nice? And it's unique when we get inside view, the inside view. This is the way it looked. You could put hay in there. They had a ramp, I believe, and then the cows would eat all along the sides here, all the way around. I don't know how they got the manure out of there, but they did. Carefully. This is a barn down in Pennsylvania. You know what they were growing? Tobacco. tobacco. I thought maybe the cows kicked the siding out, but it was tobacco. This is over near, how many have seen this barn? Over near Geneseo, Mount Morris. It was called the black and white farm because all the animals were black and white, cows, Cats, chickens, people. <laughs> but it's a four-sided barn, and I think it's still there too, right? A couple other views here. That's the inside. See the black and white cows? Tractor. There's another one there. Cupolo on each side. Must have taken a while to build that baby, too. Look at the big feed trough here, over here. Now, they built this right next to it, probably still there. When I took the picture inside, you know what they're using for bedding? Automobile tires. They were just under where the cows are. This was that barn tour we were on. See the black and white cows? Black and white farm. Can't have a red cow. <laughs> Somebody should have put one in there. <laughs> Down in Pennsylvania, we have a nice barn with the heck signs on it. Nice cupola. I didn't see any cows or anything, but they might be there. Pretty barn though could be on a calendar. Okay, where was this taken? Not too far away. Over near, uh, between, between Prattsburg and Bath, I think. That's a tobacco barn. Evidently for ventilation when they were, I wonder when they raised tobacco over there. Anybody have an idea? Quite a while ago. This is an, unusual barn and I can't remember where I took it but you could back right up in here it had that cut out but boy it must have been steep to back a wagon up that ramp there don't know why it was that way anybody have an idea no this is the uh, the house that was near there which is kind of unusual it was brick a lot of fancy trim, chimney here, had a bell here, school bell like, to call the farmers in for their meals. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> this is also down in Pennsylvania, and uh, notice all the cutouts here in the brick siding. This is a close-up, a lot of work to that, for ventilation, evidently. This is what it looked like from the inside. It was just one brick thick there. Hmm. A 
another view of the same barn and only here you can see the back side which was not brick siding and they had a place where the cows could get under in bad weather underneath here I believe plus a matching house and a windmill for the water supply also down in Pennsylvania with was this uh, field stone uh, barn and notice the ventilation cutouts here pretty good shape uh, who owned this barn very famous man first president of the United States George Washington it's at Mount Vernon still there probably This is up on above Middlesex, different roof uh, types. This was an old fashioned uh, metal and just uh, turned over between the sheets there. Still going, quite old. Then over near uh, Alfred, you've got the uh, tile roofs. I remember there was one with a a belt or a clack in it, one of the other pictures. This was the building between, uh, around Menden going towards Rochester. And the reason I took it, it had a flag on the roof here. I don't know how many stars it had, probably 50. <laughs> and if you wanted people to know where you live so they could find you, you'd put your name on the roof. <laughs> I think that was near uh, Bloomfield, I'm not sure. It was an old picture. Anybody know where this one is, John? <laughs> John Brown's barn, red barn, typical barn. I think barns look better red. I don't see any grapes there anymore though. <laughs> you know where this one is? Down on 245, in fact they've been working on it. And uh, that's quite a barn. It's Honey Oil Lake, and just as you get to the lake, this barn is right there and nicely painted, looks good. People take good care of it. I don't know whether, is that barn still there? You know where it is? It's going towards Ingleside? Burned down? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not there, right? I got a picture of that when it was burning. I can stand in my backyard and see the flames. What a fire that was. How long ago? Long time. Yeah. Over 20 years. No kidding. That was a really bad fire. I don't know how they saved the house. The house well, was right close by. Right? Yeah, the house was right in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is up in Vermont, I believe. Nice scene, it could be on a calendar, probably was. But you got the cows here, you got the nice red barn, houses, trees, clouds, got everything. <laughs> hey, where's that barn? That barn has probably been the most photographed, painted barn in the whole world, I would guess. And it's still there. And the man that owned it, though, tipped over on a tractor and was killed. Mm -hmm. Art Lincoln. Yep. Quite a while ago. This is over on Seneca Lake, and I took it because it shows a lot of things. You've got a corn crib. You've got a milk house. You've got a place you can store equipment. And it hasn't been painted in a long time, but it's still there. Typical farm barn. Know where this one is? 
about 10 miles from here, Middlesex, going towards Vine Valley. I took this, and I can't remember where, but I took it because of the different colors. You got the yellow fence, nice red barn here, another bigger barn, silo, typical middle state farm. This was up in uh, Vermont, and that was a kind of a museum, I believe, but it was all farm tools. And this was part of it. You can see there they were working on wheels and had the bench here and all kinds of tools that you would need on a farm. And you, you usually need quite a few to keep things going. That was at a, a museum I took quite a few pictures ago. It was uh, the one that was horseshoe shaped, but uh, fanning mill, and this was a, I've got one of these in my museum over here. Uh, you'd put a, what would they use to run that, a dog or a, and uh, it would uh, use it to uh, make churn milk and all kinds of things like that. So, they were used in the old farms, and this is probably a corn sheller, and you got all kinds of stuff there. Another corn sheller here, maybe. And the old uh, windmill pump. This was between uh, uh -oh, going towards Menden from uh, 5 and 20. I doubt if it's still there today because it's wood and it's probably gone. But there were a lot of windmills used in the old days. There again, that's the same barn, uh, Art Lincoln's barn, Cupolo, still in pretty good shape. This is down uh, going to Canandaigua through Rushville, I believe, or Middlesex. But they had restored this barn. They hadn't got to this, but I think before they did it, they tore it down or it fell down. But notice the, the cupolos had a lot of fancy work on them. And they had a horse up here. Weather vane, that's the other one. You know where this is? Hun Hollow. It's still about like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It hasn't fallen down. <laughs> that beam right there is holding it. <laughs> Wonder the wind hasn't caught it though. I tell you who owned this barn? A carpenter. <laughs> what was what was his name? Uh, mm, lived the, by, by uh, Wilcox there. George Harvey? No, I don't think. I'll think of it in a minute. But it, it fell down after I took this picture. <laughs> Yeah, that's what happened to it. <laughs> loot stone, loot stone. Remember loot? Loot was, uh, his eyesight was bad. He'd look one way and you couldn't tell where he was looking. <laughs> you remember him? Really? Good carpenter, yeah. <laughs> But he didn't work on his own barn, that's the, tr that's the problem. Of course, he didn't get paid for it, that's the reason. <laughs> he was the grandfather of the Bush family. Oh, yeah? His daughter married uh, John Bush. Okay. Went to school. Hmm. He lived right on the 
all for me, um, the stone from the really in Grand Slam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The house is all gone now. It's all gone. But it's about the bridge. That's where, where the wood stone is at. No kidding. I didn't, didn't remember that. This is kind of unusual. It's up in um, Hunts Hollow Road, I guess. That's a milk house ready to go. The uh, barn, here's what happened there. The, the original barn was like this, and then they put in a hay track to uh, put more hay in the mouth, so they made it higher, and that's why it's this way. Is it there today? It's Art Eldridge. Yeah, Art Eldridge owned the farm. It's going down. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> it's down. <laughs> Today, I don't think you can tell it's there. It was there. This is behind the Catholic Church in Naples, and uh, the wind caught that baby and just looked like they were, what do you call it, working on a blanket or something. That uh, ate too much hay, couldn't hold it. <laughs> That's up on County Road 12, near where that lookout is today. And this was uh, down at the foot of, you know where Rhine Street is? Uh, that barn just caved in. That was probably 20 years ago, but Across the road from is where, what's his name? It's got all the junk cars and the weeds there and everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how he, yeah, how he can get away with that because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't live there anymore. He lives up in the trailer park. But that place, he's got about four junk cars there. But people get so used to it, they don't notice it. Now we're getting towards the end. That's the worst thing that can happen to a barn. That was up near Ingleside, side road. And that is the final, when that went, we closed everything up. 